ask you for a strange favor. At the count of three, I would like you to try to tickle yourself into laughter. We'll do it all together. One, two, three. Three. Okay, you can't, right? Well, raise your hand if now you're curious to know why you can't. Okay, that's great, because now you have the amazing opportunity to Google it later. Just kidding, <laughs> I'll explain it. But first, let's talk a bit about curiosity itself, which is, by the way, a very curious topic, right? Do any of you actually know why we are curious? Just like tickles, curiosity gives us pleasure. While tickles give us the, the pleasure of laughter, curiosity gives us the pleasure of reward. According to a theory of human, curios, uh, of human curiosity by the, by the psychologist Daniel Berlain, curiosity is related to inquisitive thinking such as exploration, investigation, and learning. When we are presented with something that is unfamiliar to, to us and we don't know about, it creates in us the undesirable feeling of uncertainty. That's when we become curious. And to finish with that feeling, we want to learn. Once we've learned, we change that feeling to one of reward. This uncertainty creates a gap in us, a gap we try to fill by asking questions, investigating, researching, thinking. This is called the curiosity-driven behavior theory, which is related to the gain of knowledge. This is why curiosity is so important. Most kids are born curious. When we are little, we're constantly asking why. We, when we go to a new place, we love to investigate it. We create theories about how the fridge turns on the light when we open the door. We turn our grandparents' cane into a Star Wars sword. As we start growing, that curiosity starts decreasing. In my case, I can't remember being curious. I was just interested in watching TV, playing with dolls and sleeping. It was when I grabbed a book, not for school, but because I wanted to, when I discovered the wonderful world of reading. And then I discovered another art, the art of learning. I always hated reading and learning. For me, it meant school, boredom, stress. Nowadays, though I love learning, I still hate school. This is because every time I receive a test, the only thing I check is the score. A few days later, I forget everything I memorized for the test. The worst thing is I don't go back to that topic to try and learn it for real, because when I was trying to learn it for the test, it only stressed me out. I never get curious about that topic. I never go further that topic. I never learn that topic. But when it comes to a topic I discover by myself, and it is unfamiliar to me, I get curious about it and try to learn it. Let me give you an example. In 2020, while in quarantine, on the wish of learning, I, start, I started investigating different topics. One of those topics was the French Revolution. I really got into it and started learning about it. Months later, I was supposed to study the same topic at school, but learning it in an academic setting was completely different. I got so stressed, I lost interest and curiosity about it. Later that year, I was watching a movie about the French Revolution and I have forgotten everything I had learned. Now I'm going to explain to you why this happened. When we find something complex, conflictive, uncertain or valuable, our curiosity is awakened. In contrast, when we find something boring that lacks excitement, our curiosity is killed. Most of us find tickles valuable and complex. They make us laugh and suffer at the same time. Tests and workbooks, in contrast, tend to be boring and stressful. Let's get inside out. Allow me to present to you the mesolimbic pathway. <laughs> Research suggests that wanting and desiring information, being curious, directly involves the mesolimbic pathway, sometimes referred as a reward pathway. Now allow me to present to you some of my friends that go around here. This is dopamine. A molecule in our brains that assigns importance to stimuli associated with rewards and increases as increasing reward seeking. Desiring information increases the release of dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway. Which means, when dopamine finds a valuable, complex, and certain gap that filling it would have a reward, it will get curious about it and try to fill the gap with knowledge. 
You don't even have to compete for this reward. It's kind of a, like a free candy for your brain. During childhood and adolescence, dopamine is released in higher dosage and higher speed. And it's important in development as curiosity and exploratory behavior are the largest facilitators of learning during early years. That's why in our adolescence, it's not that we make stupid decisions because we are stupid, but because we are biologically professional explorers. The problem with this is the following. As I said before, we are born curious. When we are constantly asking why, we love to investigate. As we grow, we lose curiosity and interest. This happens because we are educated out of it. In the first place, when we ask, we are answered with, I don't know, I don't care, it doesn't matter. And we believe that. So we stop asking. And when we investigate it, and when we investigate, we're told to stay put. At schools, we're answered, it doesn't go in the test. At schools, we're told to sit down and shut up. But most importantly, we're tested. So allow me to introduce you to another hormone friend. Cortisol is the hormone known for its role in stress regulation. However, cortisol may also be associated with curiosity or exploratory behavior. It is suggested that the release of a small amount of cortisol can cause a regulated amount of stress, which can encourage curiosity. But when there is too much stress, it could make the back way response, meaning it's able to kill curiosity. And by the look in your faces, it, it seems that a stressful school life is a phenomenon you obviously know nothing about. So how do we tickle curiosity out? According to the information gap theory by George Lowenstein, there are three big things school and all educators can do. Firstly, open the gap. Students need to reach the edge of the first cliff. Our brain is designed to notice when things change. The best way to get people's attention is to break a pattern. Also, explain why the topic we're about to learn is important and how it will benefit us. How can we use it? Otherwise, our brain will decide it's not valuable and forget everything we've learned after the exam. Then, encourage curiosity. Students need to feel curious enough to, know what's on the other, to want to know what's on the other cliff. Give some knowledge and fill the gaps. Answer questions. Why? Lastly, don't kill curiosity. Students need to help jumping, need to help jumping to the second cliff. Don't stress us out. Stop focusing on exams and exams only, and focus on us actually learning. But we, as teenagers, also have a responsibility for our own education, not just educators. So what can we, students, do? Well, let me now explain to you why you can't tickle yourself. Your cerebellum, which is another part of your brain, predicts when you're about to apply pressure to your own body. So it communicates with another part, with the other parts of your brain, sending signals of when and where you're moving and how much pressure you're likely to apply when you touch something. And given that your brain has information to execute and sense your touch, it can reduce activity in your somatosensory, the network of neural structures in your brain and body that produces the perception of touch. I don't know if everyone understood what I just tried to explain. But just in case, the point is that if you already know you will tickle yourself, your body will prepare for it and won't feel tickles and won't produce laughter. So you need someone else to tickle you. And that's why they're so amazing. Tickles are maybe the only human physical experience that needs the participation of another human in order to exist. I believe that something similar happens in education. Education can't be just a service provided by teachers to students. Education is an encounter, a connection. You need someone to teach you, but you also have to be interested in learning. So let us get interested. Let's get curious. How? We have to train our curiosity. Try something completely new, a new creative activity, a sport, an art, a meditation. Get your curiosity back and keep it. The key is to maintain the mindset of a lifelong learner. Diversify your mental ecosystem. Nurture your library with new points to connect. Keep a record, keep a record of your ideas. Always have something to write on. Write down your ideas without judging and put together a database of ideas to ex explore. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. We're made to believe that answers are more valuable than the questions, and they're not by any stretch of the imagination. 
Above all, in academics where getting the correct answer means getting good grades. Approval. Questions challenge the unknown. They fuel exploration, maximize our learning abilities. Above all, they keep our eyes shining before the wonders of knowledge. At the end of the day, we're still students. We still have to go to school. And we have to take for ourselves the opportunity to produce the most important questions of our generation. We're still young, full of curiosity, and with the entire world at the palm of our hands to explore. It would be a crime on our behalf to not allow ourselves to tickle, to be tickled by others, and ultimately enjoy the miracles that only occur when people come together to make themselves feel what is impossible to feel when we are alone. And most importantly, wonder why we feel tickles and spread the untypical feeling of curiosity. Thank you very much.